These are office hours on Thursday, July 7th, 2022. Um, there's a few things going on in the world that are distracting. That is too bad. Uh, and I just wanted to set some context here. Also, the, uh, the, the Relate Wiki website is behaving badly, a thing that Pete fixed. Oh, wait, what did I just do? Oh, I just got rid of a tab that I didn't want to get rid of. Perfect. Uh, <clears throat> so a thing that Pete fixed just a couple of days ago broke again. So I don't really know what's happening, but I can use Obsidian over here to just talk it through and screen share. Uh, that will work. And earlier today, I was on a call where I was trying to use the wiki to talk about stuff and I couldn't find what I'd done. And I, I got I got discombobulated, which was not uh, not that encouraging. But I think it was just me not not having my brain set right. Um, any thoughts or questions or anything? I like you, you guys have almost no context on on what these office hours are and what relay it is and so forth. So happy to answer questions, uh, or I can just dive in and try to make the context. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you brought up the the um, relay wiki. I was wondering if it was just me and no style. No, it's it's not you. It's yeah, <laughs> and it's not me. <laughs> right, and then. Volunteer. Um, the reason I thought I'd stop in, we could definitely talk about the mid-range goals, which which you have on the task today. But also, I was I'm having a little trouble anchoring relate in my brain. So I wanted to spend a few minutes finding the, you know, kind of like when you're trying to figure out, like let's say you're putting together a puzzle and you don't want to know what the picture is. Sometimes you kind of make the borders first. And so I just want to kind of see where that vision kind of stops or if it doesn't, which is okay. Perfect. Um, so I can do that. Bill, anything you want to ask, Brad? No, I just, uh, Bentley just did the, you know, the general systems thinking perfect intro. Draw are. the boundaries first. <laughs> Draw the boundaries first. Thank you. Now, first, you find the, first you find the pieces that have a straight line on them. And then especially the ones that look like a corner and you put those at the corners and then you work your way in. Well, the um, one thing I want to throw in that happened on the Mattermost was this big, uh, really little explosion of fun on the Fellowship of the Link channel. Yeah, yeah. Which I think will end up possibly dealing with some of the the goals here on the Relate work because yes. it's pushing at this. Anyway, so that'll just, you know, but it was a lot of, for me, a lot of fun there. Um, and so we were live on a Jitsi call doing that. That's why there was a torrent. We were like, okay, everybody, let's chat over there, not in the chat over here. Um, and so I'll uh, and I'll put in the header of that channel the time and date and Jitsi link so that you all can join next week. We're, we have a weekly standing call um, on Thursdays after OGM, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and that that started because I was talking with. Sam Klein, S.J. Klein, who's part of the Underlay Project with Danny Hillis. Um, and, and he was like, oh, we should just sort of have a general conversation. Let's ignore Underlay for a little bit. And let's go have this general conversation about this commons we're trying to build together of, of shared ideas. And, and by the way, I'm a little strewn today. So all the things I'm saying are going to be a little off target, but, neat, but close by, I think. Um, and then I met Flancian, who is like a mystery participant and, and has a funny idea. And all, it turns out he's from Argentina and we, we spoke Spanish together for like a half hour the first time we met. And he's awesome. And he's built this Agora, which is very much in the spirit of Rome and Athens and LogSeq and everything else, uh, but it has its own sort of uh, ca capacities and superpowers. But he's built the whole platform out. And he, it's just kind of, it's, it's Agora all the way down in ways that I think all of us would find pleasing. And then the, the tie that binds in the fellowship of the link, and which is a, a phrase I just came up with. I'm like, you know, we're all into openness and we understand the power of links and all that. So that those are that's kind of the filter for fellowship of the link. It's like really working openly to build uh, open platforms uh, uh, of some sort. Um, so now let me zoom back out and find the edges a little bit. Uh, you're both very familiar with OGM and all of that. And uh, OGM has become sort of a series of conversations uh, within this large frame of how do we build both 
this infrastructure for sharing what we know and also how do we build the piece of OGM that I feel like we don't spend a lot of time on and we uh, and we kind of neglect, but not because it's not important, is the softer side that has nothing to do with technology and everything to do with, gosh, if I don't trust you, there's no reason I should listen to your sensible arguments or pay attention to data or anything like that. So that's that's kind of the box for OGM. Then I ended up in a conversation with Ev Williams, the founder of uh, Blogger, then Twitter, then Medium. Um, and, Ev, and I knew Ev before they invented Blogger because uh, I was a, a consultant. Uh, I was kind of like an external advisor, not, a, not so much a consultant, just a, an advisor to Pyra, which was the name of their little company before, they, before the guy across the room. While we were busy talking about <clears throat> things that would be familiar kind of in the wiki and collaboration world, guy across the room invents blogger that eats the company over the course of five or six or seven years, which includes a, a dip where at one point the whole company is one server in Ev's living room and everybody's had to be, they've had to fire everybody because they had no business model. A, a, a year later, it's three guys in an office on Market Street. A year later, they were bought by Google and he's now a Google employee and all of that kind of stuff. So, so super interesting, lots of history there. And I had a similar conversation with Ev when he was early on Medium, and I was already like way deep in the brain. And I was like, there's a thing here where we could build context for the stories that people are posting in Medium. Wouldn't that be interesting? And, and it didn't sort of stick so much then. But then we, we, I, I, I contacted him again, and we talked a couple months ago, and he was like, and he is now a fan of using MEM, M -E -M, which is another Rome-like tool that lets you share notes. Uh, John Borthwick from Betaworks, who's also a player in this puzzle, is, is a, has become a Rome fan uh, and is busy trying to figure out how do we do better than Rome. So I'm helping him create a tools for thinking camp uh, around this body of tools. So with Ev, where the conversation went, and this is, this is the midterm goals, part of the Relate Wiki is exactly meant to be this. Um, the conversation went uh, has, has the simple goal of why can't we share notes, which falls into the short-term goals of like, how do we prototype that? How do we do that? And then this longer-term goal of what would it take? And here, broad imagination, don't assume anything, but what would it take to, to build out? I, I don't even want to call it an infrastructure, but it would probably have to do with protocols and APIs, and it would probably have to do with prototypes and examples and sample code. It might have to do with legislation. I don't think so. There's no there's no thought of that right now, but it, it might. Um, but what would it take to create a, a movement and some platforms that would that would build out a shared memory for for humans uh, without creating a whole new Facebook or a whole new LinkedIn or a whole new one platform to rule them all? So preserving uh, highly distributed data in, in uh, individual privacy uh, and in particular, and I'm here, I'm layering on some of my particulars about this, in particular, allowing different people to participate with their favorite tool, but still getting the benefit of the shared work in the middle, uh, and also allowing people to express their point of view and their biases and their belief system um, in a way that the Wikipedia, for example, doesn't let us do, because the Wikipedia is, as an encyclopedia is meant to be neutral point of view. In fact, they invented this notion of neutral point of view and have, you know, a whole bunch of culture culture now built around that. And I'm, I'm a believer that we need to acknowledge and express our points of view as best we can. And if we do that faithfully and in sort of the spirit of discourse, then we can compare notes. And we can end up complexifying issues and taking them apart and saying, oh, we, we agree on these six things, we disagree on these six, let's figure out experiments or queries, or let's bring experts in, or let's do something else to to address, address those things, or our assumptions are simply fundamentally different. Yeah, you know, uh, this person's coming from a faith tradition where these are the these are the basic understandings, which just don't jive in t at all with with the other. And then maybe the question is, how do we find other ways to live together on the same rock without destroying the rock? Uh, which I think is an equally important conversation these days. And I've I've gone a little far afield uh, from the core of this, so. So the, the medium, the midterm goal part of this is kind of my charter with Ev on a short-term project to figure out um, 
what norms, organizations, protocols, APIs, and dynamics, I'm making up this list, would get us into, would bootstrap us into a reliable shared memory of the kind I just described. Did that make any sense? Yes. Um, let me see if I can wrangle it a little tighter. Please. So I heard shared memory. I don't know, it's been a goal of you. The brain is one type of that. Yep. Um, I also hear you talking about um, people's uh, beliefs and how we can work on that and stuff like that. And, and for me, something I'm building right now is an epistemic map, which is kind of a name for what Golibot is, um, which, uh, you know, triggers that. Uh, but also, we also talk about note taking. And so then I'm thinking, okay, what's the, what are the different types of data that we're going to want to have in the shared memory? Is it literally everything? So Word, Excel, Notepad. <laughs> um, is it, you know, medical study data? Is it, do we have to support any data format and any set of structured versus unstructured on the scale? Or is there a limit there saying, we just want it to be epistemics or we, or we just want it to be linked data with text? Do you have a feel for the scale? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And it gets, it gets thorny quickly, sort of. Um, so I, I think a piece of this depends on how much needs to be in the thinking system environment lens. Uh, and so there was there was a question as part of trying to come up with a think camp. We had a, a little exercise to figure out what do we mean by tools for thinking. What are the boundaries of tools for thinking? And and, yeah, I, and I saw that that was very helpful on your. Story. Yeah, and as far as I got with that, I was like, "Hey, people think when they write essays, and you could use any simple word processor to write an essay. I don't consider word processors thinking tools. Uh, so for me, you've got to bump up with a couple features to get into thinking tools. But if you took Emacs, I mean. Um, not LogSeq, but uh, there's an Emacs extension that that basically does uh, Rome. It emulates Rome. It's called oh, I'll find it. Um, and and it's like wow, somebody took Emacs, which is sort of self-programmable and extensible, and they made it do what Rome is doing. We are clearly in thinking tools territory now. <clears throat> and so I don't know what the minimum list of those added features is, but it has something to do with. Uh, wiki links everywhere or, or, or backlinks. It has something to do with tagging and metadata. It has something to do with visualization and mapping. It has something to do with a couple other things like that. And some tools for thinking do zero mapping, but they do these other things really well. Some of them, like the brain has no machine intelligence in it whatsoever, but it's really good at the mapping thing, right? And it's pretty good at the labeling and tagging thing. Meh, 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 meh. And so one of the things I came up with, which I'm not sure I have handy, I did a spider diagram. I think it's in one of the pages I put on the, on the wiki. I did a little um, uh, spider chart or radar chart with dimensions that are kind of the things I'm naming right now. And it would, it, I thought of that as a way of rating and then picturing different kinds of tools that one would consider tools uh, for thinking. So, so, sorry, long digression about what on earth is it tool for thinking in order then to come back to what do we want to see when we're thinking together. And I have a funny feeling that getting down to the raw data is really pretty important. That if if the tool for thinking were meant to be only the abstract thoughts, if if it was meant to be like uh, Descartesian logic or, or Hegelian logic with only the logical statements in a perfect crisp map without any evidence, without any... any I wouldn't like that. I wouldn't use that. It wouldn't make sense to me. One of the things I love about the brain is that it lets me mix raw data like articles with things with insights derived from articles, which then point to a whole bunch of different articles and evidence. So this argues for, hey, at some corner here, we're going to want to have an R database running in, in uh, Jupyter notebooks or whatever. And we're going to want to have access to raw data and understand which data is reliable, which isn't. And that's going to take some expertise in uh, data management, cleaning, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm not going to do that today, but I'm certainly that's certainly on the table for what could be included, maybe ought to be included here. 
And, and you know, Wikidata and a bunch of other open databases are all over figuring out how to do collective intelligence, collective sense making around the actual data in our world. And I think that's brilliant. And I want to include those communities in this inquiry. Uh, because as they come up with experiments that they can then test and do analysis on, and they can then come come back with conclusions, those could close the loop and answer some of the experiments being set up from a more philosophical point of view, for example. So does that make any sense? Yeah. Uh, so I'm not, so so I'm think, not foreclosing a lot of data types, I think. I think I'm saying that- No, you, you said I think we're, I, we're boiling the ocean, which is Sort of, yeah. yeah. That's but, okay. But, you know, you boil the ocean one bucket at a time. Right. So where do we start? But um, I yeah. but I do hear some kind of principles, um, like being able to bring any tool. Um, so the having a principle of separating data from visualization, and having the data available. So for example, let's take massive wiki, and your really uh, wiki site, is that if if you posted the raw markdown files on the server and there was some easy way for someone viewing the site to know the link to it and then they could download them and put them in their own obsidian or go to github of course which they're there and pull them from that which is very much the wiki the massive wiki model um mm -hmm. and we make that as a standard because i was thinking my website is run from an Airtable base and uh some markdown files um which are hosted on github so on every page it should be there should be a button to say how do you get to the data on this page and, and maybe there's a standard like you do a dot json at the end or i like that better than doing the having the set i don't know if, jerry how much you do with the web stuff but you can you can set application json on a web call but i can't do that in my browser <laughs> so mm -hmm. i want to have a way i can do it in the browser mm -hmm. um so it'd be nice to to have that kind of a, as one of the basic standards that you always post the, the raw, the raw data is always accessible. And then we start saying here are the suggested raw data formats. Mm -hmm. So there'd be, we need to kind of figure out and then we kind of need to figure out, is it all going to be kind of static data or is it going to be like, here's an API. Um, and that's so like, when you talk about Jerry's brain, is there a format we could store it as raw files on a web server that someone could navigate? Or do you have to have an API for something that big and that complex? And then are we gonna support APIs? But I think the main thing is separation of data and, and editing and visualizing. But also when I look at that data, it'd be nice if it had some clues in it to tell me what formats this is what's a suggested editor or editors, what's a suggested visualizer or visualizer. Yeah, yeah. or what, even just what was this originated in so that you know what yeah. the optimal tool was. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and it's very easy for me to conceptualize um, separating data from tools, from visualization or analytic tools. That, that's like, check, no problem. Once we get into protocols, APIs, is the data live or not, et cetera, I start getting like a little, a little a, a float in the ocean because it's more conceptual. And it feels to me like we've already exported my brain into a big bag of JSON objects in a Postgres database. Um, and if this, were, if this were the base of bits that I was using, I could keep it up to date all the time. And it would just live out there as a bunch of tuples in, in, in some database. And, and at some point it would be a distributed database and who knows what, but that makes sense to me, right? And, and then any node could be open for somebody else to contribute to in, as I envisioned it, kind of a fork and pull uh, kind of mode, which is one, one of the nice reasons to use GitHub under the hood uh, is that it bakes, in, it bakes in a group collaboration, uh, not necessarily a mass or large scale collaboration method, but at least a community collaboration scheme that's proven to work pretty well. Sorry, Bill, I, I, we're just getting a lot of these things out of our heads and into the conversation. Go ahead. Okay, um, so yes, I mean, it's very, I like the conversation. So it's so just a little trick, massive wiki. You're looking at a page, just type .md at the end of the URL and hit character turn and you'll see the markdown page. Right. That's just 
one of those. That's just how it's working. It's just because the way Pete and I do this mess work, you build the stores to mark down. In the, the same path, in the same path. In, in, yes, right at the same place. Mm -hmm. That's great. It's, I mean, it doesn't answer the questions that Bentley wanted, a little bit of meta information about here's some, you know, here are like some cordial things to know about what you're looking at, you know, to solve the, to provide the following affordance. So, but nonetheless, it's just, it's just a mess of wicked thing. Um, oh. So one thing I want to throw out a little bit, I'm, I'm really kind of picky about language a little bit, but I want to throw out when we talk about data, I think we should retire the term raw because in the world of science, there is no, nothing is raw. And if you're using instruments to collect data, there is nothing that is not processed, literally. Because the moment you collect some data, you- The instrument already it. has, has built like you know a digital thermometer has already built into it a model of temperature because it's sampling it's for example doing computations on yeah, whatever yeah. signal is being it's, it's transforming it's, anyway yeah. so i used to use when i was teaching about data informatics i used to use the word primary data and NASA, I can dig this up but NASA has a really nice chart of levels of data processing level zero through five anyway where they really talk about you know data that's uh, the zero level is basically you know we got rid of all the all the noise the obvious noise from the instrument mm -hmm. and then there's other process so they have levels of qualifying what transformations have been done on the original signals that were collected so it's nice to use the word primary then because people can talk about primary one could make a definition for that. I mean, I guess you could make a definition for raw, but it's, I, I, I would like to see us just be more, um, just establish a, a glossary that, a vocabulary that really helps us. I just made a comment when I was looking at uh, Matthew Lowry's uh, big medium page, you know, so my pre-association note was like, are we talking, are we, is it jargon versus, versus the general tool, the general idea? I think we should, and I wasn't, I was just kind of flipped, but I really just had this thought we could do that here. Mm -hmm. I mean, as we go forward, we could just try and create a little definition of the terms we're using. And, and, and also the one last thing I want to throw out, I posted yeah. this in Manibos several months ago, because I read this really interesting little note, but writing it was an author who actually wrote a really nice essay that said writing is thinking so one could argue anything that allows you to like you know put inky scratches on a piece of paper is the thinking tool mm -hmm. because until and it even happens you know when you try and talk create the you know a simpler compound sentence about a thought in your mind you're actually thinking Mm -hmm. because before that it has it's not really even you know it's like i don't know not expressed in any way so i don't want to push back i think you're right that we have these other tools that add more capacity but to say that if there are no links all you did was type you know use your typewriter on a blank piece of paper you'd have to say yeah that's thinking creating oh, the creating so the, created... the, the typed paper yeah you know so, what so I, I, just created, so, I just created a glossary page and put in a summary of what, what we just talked about, I think. Is this what you're thinking about? Well, I think we, as we talk, as we go through, I think it just would be helpful to always ensure that we are all referring to at least a close enough concept or notion about what we're yeah. saying. Because yeah, it's I, very easy to diverge. Yeah, I, I'm not... I'm okay with not using raw. I don't know if I like primary because when you're talking about a shared data system, does primary mean Jerry's original page or my copy of Jerry's data? Um, it sounds like it sounds like the original. But I mean, if we just say data versus visualization, maybe that's um, 
Yeah, I mean, I enough. used it when I was teaching informatics, but I was teaching about scientific data. So it was important to, that was a useful descriptor, primary data. So I, I'm, I'm not wedded to it, but I just think what, what I mean, I think it's broad data is out there. People are going to use it. We just have to be know, know that it's kind of a loose term. Um, yeah, cool. well, yeah, I mean, so I, I use raw data a lot, and it's ne for me, it's never meant the original unprocessed data. It's just before it's been manipulated into a visualization and you had, you had some loss. Um, mm. So, you know, an Airtable base is still the raw data because there's no data loss. But when you put it on a web page, there's data loss. Yeah, so I mean, I'm not going to push this because I'm talking from a scientific mean, you know, when you're talking, you want to talk about NASA, about astronomical data, they they got a list. It's one of these yeah, five, I mean, pick yeah. one, you know. And so, so Bentley, data that where the outliers have been thrown out, where the decimals have been rounded, where I'm just making things up, but, but five things have happened to it, but it, but you still haven't done anything to analyze or visualize it, that's still raw data to you. Well, I I wouldn't want to normally take the decimal points out and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I bit, made that up. It was a bad but, example. To make but yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, if you take, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It is it is Lucy. There is no you know the human language doesn't isn't specific enough. But yeah. um, there is a like you can take if you took raw data and then you put it into a you know. A data format, and I knew that raw data that that if if you took, you know, a scan of someone's handwritten notes and you took that and you tried to put that into a data table based on the scan, then yeah, technically the raw data would be the uh, the bits before the scan. But there's a tiny rarely do we go that far back. So. There's a tiny interesting story here about a UC my my alma mater is UC Irvine, and there was a professor there named Sherwood Rowland who discovered the hole in the ozone layer. And the way he did that was he stopped throwing out the outliers that other scientists were like, nah, this can't be. And, and the outliers were in fact describing a, a tear in the ozone layer. Yeah, maybe maybe source data is like, what's the source data for this visualization, for this visual representation? Well, that's, a good, that's good because then someone could go, if they found it, they could ask questions about the quality of that information. Mm -hmm. Although then, is it the original source or the copy source? I don't know. Right. <laughs> Look, in, the, we in also... the digital world, there are no originals. I mean, literally, if you're doing yeah. bit for bit copies from disk to disk, there is, yeah. it really is not original. So, so it's really the source for this visualization. What's, what's your source data used that mm -hmm. you manipulated to get into this HTML yeah, so, page? So, so this and is from a, the... from, you just got to throw it. And from a heat, you know, a little thermodynamics heat thing, you know, the deal with like decimal points. The reason you want to round them off is like, you know, people have digital thermometers. Somebody, you know, somebody gives you a temperature to four decimal points. That's like, I don't know what that is like. Yeah, it's not useful. That's not, that is not a, right. You know, it's, it's, false, not, a, it's, false it's not a value. It's just, yeah. yeah. Um, so we've gone pretty deep down a vocabulary and, and terminology uh, rabbit hole. I would love to bounce back up to the picture of mm -hmm. the midterm goals and how to describe this thing in a way that's kind of pithy and uh, intriguing and invites collaboration and helps frame uh, that this kind of heart of the Relate project in some sense. So all thoughts welcome. And I'm gonna screen share and go back to that page in Mattermost and just take, not Mattermost, in Obsidian and just take notes there. Yeah, so have you looked at Matthew Lowry's little medium thing that he's writing this, like he's got this big book going on in his personal knowledge graph? I skimmed the chapter. I haven't, um, I I think haven't read the whole thing. His picture really made me think because it's very uh, generative. Because and I, it, I looked at the picture and I didn't get the same generativity you got. This is the picture. Oh, I did. I had a thousand questions. Is it a oh, data fabulous. flow diagram? Is that what kind of a, you know? Yeah, but, yeah. The, but the thing that he says that's interesting is he has some, I took some preliminary notes and I'll probably look at some more, but he touches on, I mean, it's obvious he's in the same space. He touches on some of the same issues about trying to share, mm -hmm. create something that's shareable. 
being able to, so that there's a lot of similar terminology here that he has built this uh, it's a you know, framework model for. Um, I mean, the one thing I liked about Pete Kaminsky's using the word massive when it was, you know, M-A-S-V-F mm -hmm. was that, you know, in this wiki world, Pete and I, we just have, there's just a few basic things. We're using markdown, things are shared, they're version controlled, and because you're using computers, they're files. That's it. Mm -hmm. Right, and the question of well, how do you share them? And it's like we're talking about, you know, these simple formats. So I found that to be makes that makes the massive wiki thing really easy. You could put it almost anywhere because basically it's just a bunch of ASCII text. Um, anyway, so I just think I I find there's some similarities here, and this fits into the you know it's what Guri has talked about. Mm -hmm. In terms, of, there's a so this is a very many people are having the same yes. conversation. And in uh, and here I have got a page called Relate Pioneers. Mm. Um, and I think I need to call this Excalibrain because I think that's what mm. Pete wrote about in today's Plex, which makes more sense. And each of these needs to be a link. So these are a whole bunch of um, projects like this that I know about, and I should add to this list. So Flancian has his Agora, Jolt is doing Excalibrain and some other stuff. This is Rich Burden, who hasn't really, he's hard to get a hold of, um, but, uh, and he was the CTO at the Brain for one year, a long, mm. like 20 years ago. Mm. Then he went off and did a bunch of other stuff, including a company that Pete was working with, uh, uh, Wireline, I think it was called. Uh, anyway, he's created this project called the Distributed Operating System, which works. Like I, I they did a demo for me, and I think a year ago in lockdown, and it was really pretty impressive and, and pretty. It was sort of pretty, like Google Draw, like Google Docs is pretty, um, without this, without all the features of Google Docs. But it was, but it was an elegant environment. Um, I don't know that Obsidian is, I would call an elegant environment, although it's better than than Emacs for me, anyway. Then here's Pete's massive human intelligence project, uh, Matthew Lowry's social knowledge graphs vision, which is exactly the page we were looking at. Uh, Curie's, uh, I don't think trail marks is the name he's talking now. It's uh, hyper, hypergraph. I'm forgetting exactly what the mm -hmm. latest rev of the of Curie's project's name is. But this is this is a batch of them, and I think I'm missing a couple that we know of in our communities. Uh, but for me, I'm trying to figure out. For the middle, for the for the short term goals of relate, I'm trying to figure out how to throw these people into a, a comfortable salon together to remix their ideas, uh, to start by just sharing notes across the different tools as much as possible, um, generally if possible, but pairwise if if need be, and and that's a good that's a to me that's a, just a, like an interesting starting point but then to compare notes and say and compare architectures and say wow we, we seem to have built the same thing only slightly different ways and make a couple of choices and maybe unify some projects i don't know and then out of that to start thinking about these larger framing issues about gosh we could do this except there's no api or protocol for x to do to do some things we someone somewhere needs to stand that up and that would be great because then we can say, oh, uh, we can create an engineering effort to stand up the protocol and maybe an organization to host it or find an organization that already has similar protocols. So I'm kind of I'm kind of wandering in that space. And I know that we've got a bunch of people on deck, like in the conversation already, who've gone and built some some big hunk of this thing that we're aiming for. That make sense. Mm -hmm. um, so, so the midterm goals. Um, ba, ba, ba. The top part here was basically the the skinniest version of this I could think of. So, what will it take to create a large scale memory that is crowdsourced like Wikipedia, but doesn't necessarily have Wikipedia's model for existence? Could be any model that allows persistence to use multiple memory and context making tools. 
that allows participants to express their own points of view, that encourages the crystallizing of those points of view. <clears throat> um, so it's not 7 billion humans, each with their own completely different and separate <clears throat> point of view, but rather, hey, what, what, what Matthew wrote about this part of the business model totally speaks for me. I'm going to point to that, and so will 60,000 other people. That's what I mean by crystallizing. So here's a question from Tell me. me. So if you're crystallizing, I look at, um, well, this is, I know this probably puts it on a weird, but I'm gonna look as an engineer. So crystallizing is a solution. What problem is this solving? I know what, what Bentley's been working on and trying to help people try and organize argument and put together, you know, whatever, the kinds of ideas, evidence and stuff that solves a problem that many of us have. Right. Right. Um, it's not going to be easy because, you know, I already have an opinion. Don't confuse me with the facts. But, <laughs> um, but this, I look at this as the thing would be for the relate project to say, here's how we're going to, here's how we're going to relate our learnings, discoveries, hypotheses, prognostications. We're going to use the following tools mm -hmm. with the following interconnecting, you know, processes, practices, you know, because I, in, in a way, this list of all the stuff that's happening is like, Someday there's going to be a small number of that really seem to work for which everybody's like, okay, give it up. I'll write the software like this. Who mm -hmm. cares? Right? Mm -hmm. It'll work. I can debug it when it breaks. I'm happy. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I just, you know what I mean? It's like when two people have a problem, they're more likely to try and find a way to solve it. Right. And if three, that's maybe three people could like, well, let's, you know, instead of doing it by hand, let's like make that easier. But trying to say here, we've solved, you know, the problem that people have when they get together and can't figure out how to agree. is like, I don't know about that one. Yeah, I'm trying to make a dent in this, not necessarily solve it in some canonical fashion and some central fashion. I think I'm trying to figure out how do we work well, toward one another? And okay, so what kind of a, what kind of a knowledge? Uh, what kind of a knowledge collection? What's the artifacts that are going to be left after relate gets to its medium goals? Will there be an artifact that actually can be searched, from which things can be? Yeah, know? yeah. So, okay. so, so the nearest experiment like this that I can see happening quickly is Flancian's Agora creates markdown pages on GitHub. Uh, so does the wiki I'm working on. And if we export some chunk of my brain out into the same space, we can then start to overlap with each other around the same sorts of nodes and thoughts. Um, that to me is a is a like a, a very, very, very simple use case that's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and from that, we can start to get to some of these things. Okay, so I think so that would be a short term to stand one of those things up. Yeah, yeah. That, and that's what I mean in the short term goals here about taking the relate pioneers and build some prototypes. So that that was where I was heading here. Uh, sorry, that's sort of what I feel about. like what's happening with the massive wiki kind of thing. We have some things yeah. organized, we have some tools that are now, you know, and and just to keep going to eyes... work. And oh, to enough. keep our eyes on the big picture also, um, and I need to put in here, uh, a new term, a new item here, um, just to, to keep, to keep the big, uh, ideas also in view. I think that where we're heading helps change how education and journalism and science and governance all work. Um, because they're very disconnected from each other right now. But what if um, educational projects were feeding a shared memory like Wikipedia, but different, that journalists were also feeding and feeding off of? And when scientists did research, they were putting their work 
someplace where it was inspectable, replicable, reusable uh, by other people. And then that turned into um, books and papers and, and whatever else. And then by Rethink Media, I mean the video I shot about, hey, PowerPoint is a playlist, books are playlists. Let's, mm -hmm. let's rethink the, the constituent parts of all these ideas and how we share them so that we can bump out of emulating magazines and movies, which is what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. So if we could jump back to the midterm goals. Yep. And uh, out of that page. maybe it'd be interesting to step through one of examples like that Flancia. Um, because the, it's the it's like the third and the fourth bullet point that I think we start losing traction maybe. And these um, are midterm goals. So they may be, these may be more long midterm goals. And uh, the first couple may be the simple thing to do, I guess. Yeah, although we still get into, a, or I guess there's some, there's a nuance there that I'm wondering. So in yeah. theory, if I have, you know, let, let's say, Flancy, you said Flancy's data was on GitHub? Yes. Okay, and then let's say, let's say we exported part of your brain to GitHub. Yes. Uh, I mean, you can go and copy a page from Flancy Zagora and put it in your, it, you know, copy it into your GitHub. You could also put a link to that. Um, right. But then there's no way for people to see both or to know that they're connected. Well, that's metadata, right? Yeah, that's, so, that's the thing you were saying earlier about, hey, where did this, where did this data actually originate from? Who created it using what tool? That needs to live as context for the data somehow. And there's Nora Bateson's whole warm data contextual data thing. I think those are important factors to include here. Well, it's even it's a little harder than that because if I don't if I don't know to I look at your GitHub, <laughs> yeah, if I if I don't know to look at your GitHub, I won't see the metadata for your GitHub to know that you have a copy of Flancia unless Flancia yes. has a has a pointer. Unless we unless we decide we do the, a best, the best way to do this record. is to is to head back toward toward canonical representations of the data, and then each of us is layering on whatever metadata or extra stuff we need to make it work. But until and unless that data changes fundamentally, we're always pointing at the same ball of twine. And even even if you don't do <coughs> canonical, if as long as you have a a directory and you could have multiple directory services, so it's kind mm -hmm. of a Google for this thing. So it's it's a site that either crawl is crawling both of your data and reads the metadata and says, oh, these are these were the same item and here's their path. Mm -hmm. Or you know, as you copy out some of the data for your own version, you you report it to that. Right, centralized, keep, but multiple centralized going. search yeah. uh, tools. Agreed. Yeah, so that would be the crowdsource in the Wikipedia allows participants to use more. So, and since we're working on the raw data and not on the visualized, I uh, shouldn't should use raw, since we're working on the data and not the visualization, <laughs> um, then we're, we're kind of, we're hitting that, although it'd be nice to have the metadata to say what, what tool was it built in. Yeah. Or what sure. and and slash or what data because some of the tools have multiple data formats so but yeah some way to say what's the shape of this data um, allows persist participants to express their own point of view if you have a copy of it and you've edited it is that expressing your own point of view is that sufficient or is there more needed there sorry say that again. So now the uh, fourth bullet allows participants to express their own point of view. If, yeah. if you make a copy of Flancia's, one of Flancia's items, and then you change it, that is you expressing your own point of view. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we kind of have that. And then and, and, the and, 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 part. And that's, and that's totally complementary to this crystallizing thing, because I might agree with Flancia about 80% of his policy position on HTML, Whoa, is totally what right just happened? I think it is. It looks like their browser today. just kind of but rebooted all the pages. Or something. So much. It has the potential Hold to on. The difference between <laughs> My browser just rebooted itself and everything started playing. <sighs> there we go. 
Wow, this is fascinating. Theater of the absurd. Just this here is we go. fascinating. <laughs> My browser just rebooted every tab. Wow. Okay, I exploded something here. Um, hey, I'm back. So I have a question. I have to jump off in a few minutes. Um, but um, I wonder, do you all, we need, this work really needs connections with the, basically the library and information science community and the yeah, citizen science community, especially moving forward to the long, to the long term, because there's a lot, you know, there's a, a lot of established um, working knowledge and practice there. Yes, and we're actually connected into some of these communities. I mean, you know, we know people at the archive, we know people in different communities doing stuff. Uh, Especially with the data stuff, because there's a lot going on in the International Scientific, the International Council of Science on managing scientific data. I spent 10 years with a project working on preservation of scientific data. So there's, you know, there are a lot of efforts and there's a lot like the AGU is a, a the geophysical union, you know, uh -huh. the one that that's got a bajillion members, they have been doing an enormous amount of work on uh, data because they collect it everywhere from yeah, the ocean yeah. and the air and the land. And a friend of mine from Woods Hole Oceanographic was their data collection specialist from mostly underwater sensors and mm -hmm. sh shipboard sensors and all that kind of stuff. Really cool. Anyway, so there are projects. It would be nice somehow. It's once this, if you get some legs under this, to see what's happening there. Because sometimes I get the feeling that some of these technology driven, you know, I'm going to start with the semantic web and, uh, you know, hyperlinks. It's like, uh, you should go take a, take a walk and talk to a few people, mm -hmm. you know, because. Um, well, I, I think I think that a lot of this work is being done in neighboring communities where some of it's just really deep work that that they we need their experience and wisdom for. Mm -hmm. And for if sure. we can and if we can figure out what the loose scaffolding in the middle looks like, then it's easy, well, relatively easy to go say, hey, this is how that this is how all the wisdom coming out of data collection and science fits into this model for information sharing. And and then somebody who knows what they're up to goes and figures out the details of, of how those things marry up. But I think I think what I'm trying to figure out is how do, what what does this bare bones skeletal scaffolding look like? It's a little bit like this is a terrible analogy. Uh, companies know how to make internal combustion automobiles, and they kind of know where the transmission goes and how an axle looks and where the differential goes and whether there is a differential. And sometimes the engine is back here and sometimes it's up here. Now we're in this state where we're going electric. And for the last decade or two, there've been these deep conversations about, do the motors go inside each wheel? Do we have four motors on every car? Do there, are there four tires? Is the chassis flat or shaped? Uh, well, that depends on battery. Like all of the questions about, all of our old assumptions about how to do stuff around a, a car and mobility are being rethought. And in some cases improved on, I think a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And that's going to change everything we thought went on top of the wheels of a car, right? Because for, for me, it's just going to be pods. And now we, we're going to be able to design pods. Like, will there be a massage pod? There'll be a, a vaping pod. There'll be a brainstorming pod. There'll be a, an isolation soundproof pod so that you can have quiet time. And that's really cool. And I think what we're doing here is sort of metaphorically similar in the sense of, Man, we're trying to sort of rethink, think our way away from internal combustion websites and books and magazines into this newish space of collaboration. That's maybe not mm -hmm. that new because Doug Engelbart showed it to us in 1968, and we still don't have that. But but how do we bring this about using more or less modern technology? I don't know if that whole riff was 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 useful, but for me it was like, yeah, yeah, we're we're at this moment of possibility and reinvention. And a lot of communities around the world are taking bites out of the different problems involved here. Mm -hmm. okay. And they're not okay. and they're not bridged or talking to each other very much. And I think a piece of the longer term relate mission is to create a happy harbor or a happy docking dry dock where these pieces can come together. 
I've been watching too much sci-fi. I thought you were going to say docking station. So sorry. <laughs> almost went there. Almost went there. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta run. It's uh, almost dinner time. Casa Anderson here. So um, thank you very much. That's super helpful. Yeah. No. Thank you all. And uh, it's great to see you, Bentley. Good to see you again. Um, happy to stop. Happy to keep going. I don't know what, where your head is on this now. I just maybe want to finish that thought. So I think one of the infrastructure technologies, I mean, it is kind of like backlinks. It's just backlinks is a specific implementation. So I'd rather go another way to where there's this sort of infrastructure of a pointer to all these different versions of the same data where mm -hmm. people have their own expressed versions and then later on we can work on what's the process for crystallizing these um and there's lots of different ways you could do that that but the, the question we need to answer is how do we want to know when someone makes a copy and makes their own viewpoint how do we know that those two are related and it's slightly more than yeah, the med just having metadata on it when you make a copy is useful and then telling the person you made a copy so they could put a link to it if they have time. Right. But I think it'd be better to have something a little bit more a less less manually intervened. So having something like a Google that is running over all this data and creating a directory of all these this content address does content addressability solve this kind of? Well, so so maybe. I mean, well, sort of. So it'd be nice if, well, no, because the thing you're doing is a different chunk of data now because you've put your own view on it. It's not just mm -hmm. a different view. It's your, you're expressing a different opinion with the data, not just about the data, but a different version of that data. So the data is different. So the hashes aren't the same. So somewhere we still need to record that this data is like this data and it needs to go both ways. Uh, mm -hmm. Not needs to, it'd be nice. So V1 well, could be, if I make a yeah. copy, the standard is in my metadata, I say, I point to the source, but I, I, I think to get to that, fifth or sixth bullet point you'll need something that aggregates all that metadata into a few central places that people could search yeah. um and we're we're getting into issues like transclusion like what is proper transclusion how does that work but also there are some hacks hackable solutions in the interim like fedwiki basically super replicates everything so if I go to your FedWiki and, and go start reading a page, my understanding of how it works is it just copies that page over into my FedWiki yeah. and, says, and says, thank you very much. And then I'm working with a local copy, whatever I do with it. Uh, and then I can, if I were to make a change to it, I have no idea whether it notifies you and, and, and says, would you like, I have no idea if there's any kind of fork and pull there. Yeah. Uh, but FedWiki to like replicate uh, um, what's the word? Um, promiscuously. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, and and, and it's, it's and it's kind of a short-term way of addressing this issue. Yeah, you still have the problem though, to where it's really hard to see the complete picture of all the people that have their own totally. view on this thing, which could yeah. be a later thing. But but yeah, having built building into the standard that you always. When you make a copy, you always say what the source is, which may be what they do in FedWiki. Yeah. And then, you know, there's a standard thing to communicate back to them to say what it is. And then there's this, you know, and then we could build on top of it later on at some point the technology to give you a view of all the different versions. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so maybe it's just a group of standards that says, you know, I created, here's the data, not the mm -hmm. view. Here's the tool I'm using to edit it. Here's the data type within that tool. And you can figure out other tools that could use that data type. And then here's the source of the data, the pointer to the URL that I got the data from. And then you kind of have the 
the raw workings of kind of a minimum viable product. Yeah. In GitHub, I don't understand yet the difference between forking, branching, and cloning. Um, and I think branching is considerably different from forking. Yeah, so, well. And I'm not asking that because I want to understand yeah. the differences right now. I'm only saying yeah. these are different ways of taking a copy and doing something about it and notifying the originator uh, that, that something interesting might have happened to a piece of something they created. Yeah. Um, yeah. Forking, branching, and cloning are all taking a copy. Mm -hmm. It depends on how far they are away mm -hmm. and whether you have permission to merge in. So you're either then merging or doing a pull request, depending on your permissions. Um, yeah. So, and I'd be happy to go over that with you sometime. That's not that hard once you get yeah. your. Now, your now for the most primitive versions of what we're talking about, I don't know that we need to solve this issue of the data synchronization or do we? Like, like not data it, synchronization. Well, um, I think data, data coherence. I don't know what to call it exactly. Uh, or are you talking about the crystallization part, or just no the just crystallization? The, the crystallization. I think I uh, I think it's a bugaboo in my head. I don't know yeah. that anybody else cares. And the only the, the reasons I have for crystallization are a to prevent fragmentation and just replication all over the place. Right. I mean, well, actually. One of the goals of the system is to try to not minimize, but and not optimize. I don't know what the right word is. Uh, replication of effort, yeah. right? So, right. so, so, how do we prevent lots and lots and lots of copies of exactly the same thing happening all over the place, or even worse, we, slightly different things that we don't that aren't intended to be different? They're just exactly. And and long ago there was a website I've forgotten which one which had a couple of simple things which took a folksonomy of tags and tried and were quite functional at narrowing the namespace for that folksonomy so that if there was a plural and a singular, it would identify that and, mm. and, and connect them you know, back together. Um, a bunch of things like that, which made the, the folksonomy much more useful because it wasn't all broken and, and fragmented. It, it, it tended back toward um, some, some terms that started getting a lot of energy because one of the cool things about crystallizing or, or collapsing back in is then you can say, and this node has 66,000 people who have attested that they love this node and are, are pointing to it as part of their, you know, logic mainstream. That's a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. and, and for me to play this out is, you know, uh, David Reed would go to Congress and say, uh, see this node right here with this behind this policy issue and this policy page, there are 2,336,224 people right this moment who will vote for it. Uh, if you will approve it or put add it to the bill you're you're sending in, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and I think that's really powerful as opposed to some lobbyist saying I speak for you know lots of people. So I th I think the minimum viable product is a metadata protocol and some patterns. So mm -hmm. like you post your data at a URL on the internet. And with that, let, let's say that's your original information. Yep. Someone else wants to express their own view is that they copy that data, post it at their own URL, and then they, oh, I'm sorry. So in the first one, you post your data, you post the app you used, and you post what type of data from that app it is. And then someone can copy that, and then they, um, are supposed to have the the those the leave that metadata but add to it the source for yep. this and maybe the date and time it was taken and then they can go in and edit it and it would override saying oh now it's done with this tool and it's this data format um, but we have the source and so that would that would be I think that would be minimum so like you could do this with wiki with massive wiki if we just on all the markdown pages, there was some metadata or another file next to it that says this is using um, Obsidian, you know, for mm -hmm. your rel eight, it would say this is Obsidian and it's a standard 
Obsidian. <laughs> which could easily go in YAML in the header. And then there's a couple of plugins like Data View and a few others that pick up that data and can do stuff with it. It's yeah. interesting. So. so that would be minimum, I yeah. think. And then after that, you're talking about building services and infrastructure to make that more visible and easier to do. Yep. And then you'd have apps that are compliant. So if I wanted to make a new version of Blogger, I would have it, it'd be a web editor that anyone can go on and do it. But in the end, uh, anyone can, can put md.md at the end of it. They'd see the markdown. They'd see the tool it was edited in and, and, and Blogger 2020. And uh, then they could copy the data, put the source back. And it would, you'd kind of have all these benefits. Makes yeah. sense. Hmm. Uh, one quick thing, just to kind of completely derail you from that thought. Um, okay. On the relate wiki, the files. Mm -hmm. um, one thing's about having like a little directory of things is that often the name for me isn't enough to be useful and then I have to click through to see what they are. Right. So a single sentence explanation of kind of what it is would be helpful. And, but that wouldn't look really good probably in, in the table format you have. Right. So I was trying to figure out what I would suggest. And I think one of the things I would suggest would be a, um, oh, I do get the markdown for this. Okay. Would be, um, I don't know if you'd like this or not, but have one row with all the columns in it and then a, a bottom merged cell that has like a description and then a spacer. So then it's more like cards. Um, As opposed to just rows. Um, now, I, I don't know how the t these tables work very well, but I'm, a, I'm hoping that there's some reasonable word wrap and stuff like that. So there, the primitive answer is like, just do a 10 word description of each project that fits in a cell in, in the table. Yeah, I mean, you're already getting bad wrapping on that, right? Finish yeah. ed. Uh, that's only visible on this page. I think it. I think it's prettier when it prints to the web page, web. but of course it's uh, broken right now. And until you view it on your phone, yeah. And then you get the exact same thing because they, they. I think they both use the same. Um, gotcha. The same renderer ideas. J tables are just hard on small screens. Yeah. Okay. Um, so so there's pro probably a need for a different. Um, Although what, what would be neat is to have, I, I don't know how useful this would be, but um, it'd be neat if that was data. And then when it was on the wiki site, it would say, oh, this is a table. Let's make these, you know, let's add a little JavaScript and make the columns sortable and make a, make a card view and, you know, instead of the table view and give features like that, that, that would work with any table. That's yeah. Um, okay. um, uh, and I'm, I correct me if I'm saying something that's not similar to what you just said, but there could be metadata in the meme brain, brain page, the brain dynamic brain face page, et cetera, et cetera, that has a full text description. And then this t this table could just be a little app that pull that says, "Hey, go pull these fields from each of from any, go find any markdown page on this directory that has metadata that says it's, it's a tile, and then sort them by this field, and then." pull these fields in and display them as cards. Yeah, I mean, even if the standard for Wiki was that if you hovered over a link, it would it would give you the- The text, uh, longer the meta text, text description. The alt text. that link. And then yeah. so if you hovered over the meme brain one, then you'd see what it, what it is. Gotcha. So, yeah, so, so there's all, lots all, of ways to do it. All of this partly to say that you're not a fan of clicking through to read what the thing is. You would like it to be summarized up here. Yeah, I guess what I'm saying is, yeah, this, well, this table is completely useless to me mm. without that one little piece of information. If I don't know what mean brain is, the name doesn't mean anything to me. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 I have to click through each one and I'm like way too lazy to do that. So then I was thinking for like brainy McBrain face, which is an example, what's that really is meant to be is an example open source. Uh, visualizer of mm -hmm. meme brain. So it's not meant to be 
useful. It's just a demo. Mm -hmm. um, demo visualizer of meme brain would probably be the smallest, like those four words that, that would be useful. Mm -hmm. But no, oh, that's a demo. I can go click on it and learn. If I know the code, then I can adapt it or yeah. template. <laughs> I don't know which column you'd want to put that in. Yeah. Um, and there's also doopity doop. And I don't um, know if you could put icons on there for the status instead of the words. But I guess you could do um, either ASCII or um, emojis. Um, so for which thing? For like the finished and the proposed, if you want to make a fill oh, yeah, easier, you can make, make them you do a check mark for the finished right. and the and a light bulb for the proposed. Good thought. Uh, let me see if I can. So I just put in a new column. Yeah, description or something. Yep. Yep. And then meme brain is a Jerry's brain crawler. What is it? Uh, I guess I'd say an API for Jerry's brain. Let's you know see if I mean? that even, let's see if that's even pretty. <clears throat> that's not terrible. That's okay. Yeah. That's just not terrible. Um, okay. And and we can replace the these guys, the finished and proposed with icons. That'd be good. Um, huh. Yeah, this gets ugly really fast. Uh, yeah, tables are not. Yeah, not pretty. And it's so much easier in a spreadsheet. I mean, you know, this could be a spreadsheet or an air table embedded in a get in a in a. Mm -hmm. I mean, site. they could make a full WYSIWYG editor in this. Yeah, if they wanted to, and over time, so it'll it'll just be like you're editing it. Yeah, yeah. But thank you. That's helpful. Cool. All right. Well, it was an interesting talk. Thank you very much. Very fun. And uh, we'll keep um, exploring and see where we can get. It, you it, you were when you were proposing the problem of you know not being able to kind of like make decisions together and having all this popularity it's like that's exactly what i'm working on yeah but you're at the kind of higher meta level and then i'm i'm a specific use case and what i'm trying to figure out and this is why my brain hurts is what is the largest framing for a general purpose scaffolding that lets Gullybot and other things you're working on fit elegantly next to everything else that's going on? Yeah, yeah. So finding a way that I could post the Gullybot data in a data yes. format um, and then put those pointers on it, that'd be an interesting little experiment, but you gotta figure out the granularity level because it's like, I have a debate do I want to post the individual claims separately or the whole debate? And then how do they know? So oh, yeah, got to figure it, that out. It is, it's, it's confusing. But I'll, I'll, but I'll be cool. thinking about that on, on my project and I'll Sweet. let you know if I think of anything. Sweet. Thanks, All right, man. man. Talk to you next time. All right.